Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Google Ads API Developer Series on Authentication. I'm Laura Chevalier, a Developer Relations Engineer on the Google Ads API. In this episode, we'll look at some authentication best practices in handling your credentials and managing your Google Cloud projects. We'll also look at some of the limitations you might encounter when working through these topics. We won't have time to cover every authentication best practice, so be sure to check out the documentation for more. I've included links throughout the presentation, which I recommend you reference as you build out your Google Ads API integration. You can access those links in the slide deck linked in the video description. Quick side note before we get started, if you find this video useful, be sure to give us your thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to be notified about upcoming videos. We'd also love to hear your feedback on how this video format works for you. Let us know in the comments. With that said, let's get right into it. First, we're going to look at OAuth credentials, or your client ID, client secret, access tokens, and refresh tokens, starting with some OAuth credential limitations to be aware of. These limitations pertain to the credentials themselves rather than the Google Cloud project that was used to generate them. We'll get to that later. First, tokens expire. If you've been following along with this video series, you know that access tokens are short-lived. If you're using a client library, you don't need to worry about refreshing your access tokens. However, refresh tokens can also expire or be revoked. Users who have granted permission to your application may revoke refresh token access at any time. In addition, refresh tokens expire every seven days for external users on applications in testing mode. Refresh tokens can also expire if unused for six months. Next, there's a limit of 50 refresh tokens that can be issued per user per OAuth client ID. If the limit is reached and a new refresh token is generated, the oldest token will be invalidated to stay within the limit. Now that we understand some of the limitations, let's discuss OAuth credential best practices. When an application no longer needs to act on behalf of a given user, it should revoke the access it was given. This is important to ensure that an application doesn't access user data it isn't meant to. An application should also revoke credentials when the permissions needed have changed and generate new tokens granting the correct level of permission. As we now know, refresh tokens do not last forever. Assuming your application still requires access to a user's, ac a user's account, it should trigger a workflow for users to reauthorize the application upon losing access due to re token revocation. Refresh tokens can last indefinitely, but there are ways they can become invalid, some of which we covered earlier, so developers should be prepared to handle this scenario. When generating your refresh tokens, only request Google Ads API scope, which still goes by the name AdWords. Requesting ad additional permissions may deter users from granting permission, or if permission is nonetheless granted, it could allow for malicious or incidental mistreatment of user data. Note that the client libraries request this scope automatically. Lastly, be sure to store your OAuth credentials in a secure location to prevent bad actors impersonating you and accessing your user's data. Do not commit your secrets to code, even in private repositories, since this will make it much easier for bad actors to steal them. Instead, consider using a secrets manager like Google Cloud Secrets Manager, which makes it easy to, to both secure your credentials and to rotate them as needed. The Secrets Manager has an API, so you can, you can handle this programmatically. Next, let's look at some limitations and best practices around another important credential, your developer token. Starting again with some limitations. First, a given GCP project can be linked to only one developer token, though de a developer token can be linked to multiple GCP projects. So when I use a client ID and secret to generate a refresh token, and then I authenticate with those credentials and a given developer token, the GCP project becomes linked to that developer token, and no other token can be used with that project. As a rule, a company should only have one developer token, and for the majority of cases, they only really need one. The manager account used to generate the dev token can access completely separate MCC hierarchies, if different teams within a company want to manage their Google Ads access separately, they can do so, but they would still share the same developer token. Instead of using a developer token to manage API access, permissions are managed at the user level. I found one analogy to be really useful in understanding this. A developer token is like a driver's license. 
You can use it to drive any car, but it doesn't mean you have the keys to every car. The key is the refresh token, which is granted at the user level. If a user has access to a given ads account, then the refresh token granted by that user will have access to that same ads account. Moving on to developer token best practices. Because developer tokens can be used to access any ads account, they should be treated like a password and stored securely. This is where the driver's license gets a little bit shaky. If someone steals your license, well, they don't look like you, so that can only go so far. On the other hand, if someone were to steal your developer token, they could use it to impersonate you, and their API calls would be attributable to your business. If you only have basic access and are still subject to daily API quotas, then unauthorized use of your, your developer token could exhaust your quotas unexpectedly. Thankfully, there's an easy way to reset a compromised developer token through the Google Ads UI, which we'll discuss in a bit. If you're waiting for your developer token to be approved for basic or standard access, you can still use your developer token with test accounts. And once your developer token is approved for higher access, you should continue to use it for your test accounts. You cannot create a developer token under a test manager. If someone does manage to get a hold of your credentials, here's how you can go about resetting them. You can reset your developer token in the API center of the manager account that generated the dev token in the first place. Note that this won't require you to go through the review process again. You will be able to use the new dev token immediately. If someone gets a hold of your client ID and client secret, they can impersonate you as a developer and generate refresh tokens for their own users on behalf of your application. In this case, you do not have to reset your client ID, but you will need to reset your client secret. To accomplish this, go to the API credentials page in the Cloud Console, click on the name of your credential, and click the Reset Secret button. With the possibility that you may need to reset your credentials, it's especially important to manage your credentials with a secrets management tool so that you can make any updates in one place so that the change is propagated to your application without going through a period of authentication failures. The last thing we'll cover is Google Cloud Project best practices. For starters, there's a wide selection of Google Cloud services available to help you manage your user permissions and project resources. I won't go into detail on these, but we recommend checking out tools like Organizations and Identity and Access Management, or IAM, to maintain access to and control over your GCP projects. Next, cloud projects may have different restrictions depending on whether the app is for production or testing. In fact, this is a requirement in order to complete OAuth verification, which we're about to discuss in greater detail. Having separate projects for production and testing also helps to isolate test users from production users so that user refresh token limits are tracked separately for test and production purposes. Under the umbrella of Google Cloud Projects is OAuth verification, a process that's required for production applications accessing sensitive or restricted user data. Part of that process is configuring the OAuth verification page in your project and the scopes of your application. As I mentioned earlier with regards to refresh token scope, you should only request the scopes that you actually need, as the application will request those permissions from users. Users may not permit the application for its real purpose if unrelated permissions are requested, or if they do, that might allow for malicious or incidental mistreatment of user data. As of October 2020, the Google Ads API scope is classified as sensitive. With the change in scope, applications requesting permissions from their users will show an unverified app screen unless they go through the OAuth verification process. To avoid the restrictions imposed on unverified apps, you should verify your application. The OAuth verification process typically takes three to five business days to complete and comes at no cost. The process involves steps like making sure you have a privacy policy URL in the OAuth consent screen of your GCP project, verifying your website ownership through the Google Search Console, submitting a video demonstrating how the scopes will be used, and submitting a verification request through the Cloud Console. If you choose not to verify your application, the app will display the unverified app screen when requesting permissions from users. The application will also face a cap of 100 users. 
That is, a total of 100 users can grant the application permission to act on their behalf. This user cap is displayed in the OAuth consent screen page within the APIs and Services section of your GCP project. There are some exceptions to the verification requirement, like if your app is for personal use or is used by internal users and marked as internal in the Cloud Console. You also don't need to submit your app for verification if it's for testing or development purposes. However, your app will still be subject to the unverified app screen and the 100 user cap. See the linked help article for a complete list of exceptions and instructions for how to configure your project as exempt. As a general rule, it's best to verify any and all production apps. That concludes our episode on authentication best practices. I hope you found this to be a helpful guide and that you take advantage of the additional resources I've shared throughout the slides and in the video description. Please let us know if you have any feedback, and we look forward to seeing you in other videos. Thanks for watching.